Welcome back to the Paddle and Fin Podcast Network. We're brought to you by Yak Gadget. For all your kayak fishing accessory needs, go to yakgadget.com. Pelican cases, coolers, and lighting. Go to pelican.com. The 153 Bait Company. For all your hard and soft bait needs, go to the 153anglers.com. Now let's get this show started. Hey everybody, welcome back to The Reel Down on Paddle and Finn. Uh, it's going to be me here for a while. I'm going to be filling in for Jimmy for a little bit. So uh, sorry you got to look at me, but we're going to have a good time and have some good shows. Um, so tonight we're just going to kind of do, there's a lot of things going on in kayak fishing. And I just thought, you know what, let's just put some of the biggest and best anglers and minds in our sport together. And see what happens. See what see what we can figure out. What's going on? And uh, and yeah, d- just have a little conversation about kayak fishing twenty going into twenty twenty two. So um, going around the horn. First, we have Shane Lamont from California. Hey, got the a California guy in there. Our, <laughs> one of our own pal of fin guys, uh, Casey Reed, one of the best in sport. And that was awesome. That oh, I just want to say this old town. It's awesome that they did that for their anglers and made this great video with you in it. So. You know, big big props to Old Town. That that was a great video, by the way. And uh, next up, Rob Brown, the voice of K- KFL. So I got though at least one KFL guy in here just to muddy up the water. Yeah. Uh, Kurt Smith, Mister Hobie, uh, former national champion, obviously one of the best Nate, uh, best minds in the sport. I always love having you on, Kurt. Thank and you. Russ Snyder is nice enough to be here. He's at the Tin House making a check as we speak getting paid for no matter what he does and he has majestic hair and i, I wish i had your hair <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the thanks. show everybody and, th- and thanks for being on thanks for having us on yeah well, thanks man i All appreciate right. the invite bro yeah anytime so uh here we go we're at, I'll, I'll start out with a first question here um what does the Hobie BOS maxing out the entries in their first two events? They maxed out Toledo Ben, Santee Cooper. What does that mean? And why does it feel like a big deal? It feels like a big deal. Like I, I know in other years, Seminole, the last two years, because it's first event of the year, it got close to maxing out. But it feels like this year's kind of something different's happened. Like it feels different, right? <laughs> It's way different this year, I feel like. I, th- I feel like there's a lot more energy just behind kayak fishing in general. Not even just the Hobie events. I think we're really seeing it in the Hobie events, but uh, KBF too. You're just hearing people talking about it a lot more. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and congratulations to AJ. I mean, if, if you put together a trail where every single year, does anybody, it, it, obviously except for Flexgate, has there been any other problems? Has there been any problems with the payout? Has there been any problems with anything else? I, like, I literally can't think. Maybe I've heard a couple of things with River Guy saying, well, the, the boundaries aren't quite out far enough. That's the only complaint I've ever heard about a Hobie. The ones I fished have been ran perfectly. So congratulations to him for doing it. And, and I mean, it's, it's kind of everything he put together has come to fruition. And now he's selling out events. Um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty, spe- it's pretty special, man. It, it really is. Uh, I've had the opportunity to do, uh, I think two Hobie events now. And, uh, th- like you said, man, it's pretty, it's very professionally run. Um, everything's usually on point. Uh, I was very upset that, uh, Santee sold out too much. Oh. Uh, you know, cause I was looking for it. I wanted to fish that one, man. You know, um, I didn't think I would have had to get the, get my spot held two months prior, but. You know, it's just a matter of a day. I think it was like a 120 in the morning and then word started getting out and just spread like wildfire. Huh? Mm-hmm. Next thing you know, it's, it's sold out in a matter of a uh, half a day. So it's was- yeah, I mean that, that first event selling out really mm-hmm. like, I think fired people up and was like, well, is this one going to sell out? And they just jumped on it right then, you know, and, and of course it sold out. And of course, uh, Vinny down there in North Carolina, you know, he's got a, a huge trail to Queen yeah. City, and you know him pushing that. They they got, a, I mean, I'm pretty sure they have a hundred guys at pretty much all of their events, right around there at least. So I mean, that's that's yeah. a lot of people, and I'm sure most of them are fishing it as well. 
Um, I'm just hoping I really wanted to go to that event. Um, I even I got rid of all all my kayaks except the one with the motor. So I even ordered a kayak just to fish that event. <laughs> and now I didn't get signed up. But um, oh, man. I'm hoping uh, I think Vinny's going to be running the tournament alongside of it. So I'm thinking I may just go fish the Queen City tournament um, down there because Good Santa is a pretty too. awesome place. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and, and and that's kind of the thing with the first two events, Toledo Bend and Santee Cooper. I mean, those, those are two great, I mean, places people just want to go fish anyway. So it's yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah. yeah, you layer a great event on top of great, you know, a great body of water, and yeah, it's. Yeah. They're opening up Eufaula, is it this Friday to, or Friday, I guess, right? I, I haven't seen that. Well, uh, I know, tell me, yeah, they're opening up Eufaula next. So I know AJ put out a post. AJ had put out a post saying that uh, they were going to look at um, put, opening up the events uh, at a given time frame before instead of having multiple events open at once so that more people have the opportunity to get in. You know, gotcha. people who budget right. for it and stuff like that. And I thought that was pretty cool, man. So Yeah. He always does a good job thinking things through and, and you know, asking Angler. He, he does a good job just asking us anglers, too, our opinions and uh, really listens. And, um, yeah, once, once, you know, and that's that's what it takes to, to, to run a tournament like he does, just, you know, listening to anglers, asking questions, seeing what they, what they want, what they like. And I think that's why – the response has been so good because the anglers, you know, really appreciate that he's, he's, you know, looking out for all of us and trying to, trying to, you know, give people what they're looking for, you know. And that, that that's the most important thing in everything is life, business, run, run a tournament trail is feedback. Just yeah. having a good feedback, you know, from your customer, from whoever it is, and just listening to it. I mean, that, that's so important. Shane's over here, like. Hell, y'all talking about Hobie? We, we don't have Hobie down here. <laughs> <laughs> no, we uh we had a couple of events that didn't show you know didn't show out as as best that we probably thought we could. I think Russ, you you fished the Delta event, didn't you? I did. Yeah, yeah. I had a good time with it, and it was yeah. I, I if you went, I told AJ man, if you go back and have have a Hobie event at Berryessa like in March. I think yeah. that, that there would be a good a good showing uh, for that. There'd at least, at least one little guy, just one. <laughs> 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 but a lot of uh, one thing too, just just kind of I guess talking about the West just for a second is like you know a lot of our guys do have motors, whether it's bow mount or rear mount. Um, it's it's a lot of guys run it, and I know that's not allowed, obviously. So that's kind of a hurt for you know a lot of our anglers out here, but. Um, I know it's not an excuse, but it's just something that a lot of our anglers run. You know, we have um, the Torquedo in the back or the Newport Vessel and the bow mount. And then uh, it's just unfortunate that we don't have one, but we'll see what happens. I, I can't imagine if they actually open it up to motors, it would just, I don't know what would happen then. I mean, if they sell out this fast with no motors and if they allowed motors, I it would be crazy. And then uh, y'all have people like Damien Tao who have like a motor in front and motor in the back. You know the the double motor people too, but yeah. uh, I mean it's it, it's not like y'all might not have Hobie, but you have Wild West Bass Trail, ABA, yeah, uh, you, like Yakka Bass. Y'all have so many great clubs and events. KBF's still out here too. So, yeah. so it, it's it, it's not like y'all are just without tournaments at all. No, no, no. Yeah, but, but uh, it, just hope, just maybe one, maybe one would be cool. <laughs> maybe every other year, maybe maybe it'll hit yeah. y'all next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so kind of what what is that going to mean um like going forward i obviously hope like russ just said aj is going to take some feedback from the anglers but what does that mean for next year and why 200 is 200 i'm not saying it's just like an arbitrary number 200 because 200 probably sounds right 200 250 i mean going forward is there any, do you think it'll be if they let let's say hypothetically they sell out every event, which it usually get taper off, obviously, as people they're not not competitive for AOY and things like that anymore. Later in the season, it gets hot and they have family stuff, whatever going on. Do you think if they did sell out every event, is he going to increase the field and maybe increase the the buy-in or or kind of do you see anything else happen with that next year if it did sell out? I'd really like to see just more more AOY events 
um, count you know, t- towards, your, towards your score. I think that would – I don't know that, if that would help lower the numbers or help increase the numbers, but I think it would be good either way. I'd like to really see that. Um, but other than that, I don't know. I mean, it, it's hard to run a tournament with – with that many people. And I heard AJ say that's why they chose to kind of limit it so they could provide the best experience for everybody. And um, yeah. so yeah. I don't know what that looks like if they add 300 or, you know, 250 or whatever, but uh, it'll, it'll really be interesting to see what, what they do, especially if they sell out a, a third event or a fourth, you know? Yeah. I, I think it kind of depends on what, I mean, I haven't heard like AJ's mission statement of how he sees that trail, it because it's it's Hobie Trail and it's kind of a hundred percent payout and a marketing arm of Hobie. Is you know, do they want to keep the every man in there or do they want to make it an elite thing or you know, I I don't know. Oh, AJ, he's asked a lot of questions under me and a number of other people about doing some kind of pro series or some other elite style yeah. event that. You know, where it's like more of a four or five hundred dollar entry fee. Like, I, don't, I don't know if he has anything in the works or anything like that, but he has discussed it with me and a number of other anglers as well. So I know he's at least put some thought into into doing something like that. Okay. Well, that, that makes sense. We'll see. Um, and I, I have a quite a few of y'all just fished the Kissimmee event, and uh, is it Kissimmee or or Kissimmee? I call it's it Kissimmee. Good. But it's Kissimmee. Kissimmee. It is Kissimmee. Okay. I've been saying it like I'm like I'm a cool local, like I thought I knew, but maybe I sound like an idiot. I, I don't know. Uh, I, I know some of y'all fished that event. Can somebody explain? Because I still don't understand this. Um, why you would choose, let's say for me, like I haven't fished any of the KBF events this year. There's only been one. But um, why you would fish a trail series over a pro series. And I know the pro series – People are trying to qualify the pro for the pro series next year. Like what? What? What does that mean? Do, it's just kind of a side pot, really. It's a two hundred dollar side pot. Option. But I think the 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 major attraction of it is the the championship. There's going to be a guarantee fifty thousand dollars to the winner of that championship and of the pro series for the pro series. Oh. Yeah. So and the payouts really good. If you look at the payout structure. Um, I think, it, like I say, it's like two hundred dollars for the tournament, but it paid uh, on the pay scale. It, it paid back even even better than the the Hobie tournaments actually. When I, when okay. I saw the um, yeah the payout, so it, it was pretty impressive. And I know they got a pretty good turn. I feel like it was a pretty good turn. I think it got forty five to fifty something like that, like high forties for the fo- first uh, pro series. And it's I mean, it's, it's it's the same tournament. It's not like it's a separate tournament or anything like that. It's just basically a two hundred dollar side pot, really. But, yeah, but uh, every year the for the pro series, I think tw- he something was written out where every year the pri- the entry fees are going to increase, right? And you have to qualify for it eventually. Is that how it's working, or is it, is it every year it's going to be a side pot? I don't I, know. I think eventually it's going to be. Its own separate trail, yeah. and uh, the trail series will be your way to qualify for the pro series. Okay, um, I don't know. I'm not sure about the qualifications right now. If there's a qualification to next year, I can't remember all of those details. But um, but yeah, eventually the goal is to get it to where it is its own separate entity, and um, that's that's really what I'm looking forward to. Like I I. Yeah. For the past couple of years, I've really wanted something that's that's qual. You got to qualify to get into it, and you got to fish. You basically have to fish the whole series. I mean, you may be able to drop one event for AOI purposes, but like, I think that's you know w- once you have your your however many you know twenty, thirty, forty of the top guys in the sport fishing against each other at every event that's going to show you your, like who your AOIs are really like, that's going to show you who the best are. I mean, there's, there's a lot of times where, you know, how it's been in KBF is like, there's people that don't ever fish against each other until the championship. And then the championship is kind of make or break for, you know, for pretty much everybody. But, um, 
but I'm excited to see where that's going to go. And I, I really hope uh, they can live up to what they're talking about and, and, you know, bring us a true, you know, elite pro series. I think everybody wants a little yeah. elite pro series, you know, yeah. <laughs> everybody's looking for that. That's yeah. That's that's I think that I, I thought that's what the pro series was going to be. So you wanted to qualify for it for next year. So whenever the entry fees grow up, go up and that kind of separates itself from the trail, you want to be qualified for that. But I, I didn't know. I mean, how did you, yeah, how did you that, get into that, it that, this year? How did you get into it this year? So this year it was weird, man. Like uh, they took like the top 100 from uh, the national championship. They took like the top 100 from AOI. It was like it was like a weird formula that he came up with for who was qualified for for this year, uh, for the first year. But uh, like I think for the next year it's going to be like top 100 in AOI uh, standing. Just something I definitely recall him saying. Um, I'm. I'm choosing not to fish it the pro series this pro series this year just because it's it's uh you know I'm in the military man I ain't got that type of money to to do the trail one trail two the pro series and I can't be dropped five hundred dollars at each you know for uh for the tournament oh. but like once it separates itself like Casey brought up you know and it's no it's not yeah. it's not gonna be like I don't like the fact where you have it on the same body of water at the same time as the trail series. Like, I think it should be its own thing and be on its own weekend or whatever the date may be. Yeah. Yeah. Th thank you for the, for your service, even though it's the Navy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Air force. Um, yeah. I, I think from people from the outside, it, it, it was difficult to follow with a day one to 10 invitational pro series, the 10, it, it was, like I'm, you know, me and some other guys are trying to run the fancy deal. And it's like, oh Lord, how do we do? You know, because it's there's so much stuff going on. But yeah, it, it'll be all right. It, I, I think once it separates itself and the pro series is different from the trail, it's it's going to make a lot more sense for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, uh, all right. So I guess here's the question: If somebody's man, somebody's new, they've been fishing their local trail, the grassroots stuff. They're good. They're winning events. They're ready to make that next step into the national trail. Except for the obvious motor, no motor. What? Which one do you fish? Like uh, that? That's like a real question. <laughs> or, uh, is it just unless you're going for AOY? Is it just kind of a la carte? Like, oh, I want to fish Toledo Bend. That sounds like a fun place to fish. Or, you know, I, I I don't know. I like I'm seriously I'm in that situation right now where. I'm before the KFL season. I'm going to fish a few national trails, trail events. I'm helping to run my local club too. So this year I'm really busy, and next year I'm going to fish a lot more national stuff, like one trail. But this year I don't know which one to fish at all. I have no clue where I need to fish, except for the first two Hobies because I'm already out of them. Yeah, so I think I, it just I, really. I, it, it, I think it really just depends on like you got to find out what your goal is. Like yeah. I, I had the same dilemma that you're having. I'm like, what? I wanted to fish Hobie at Santee. Um, I want to fish bass. I want to fish bass for AOI. Um, I obviously want to get into the 10 again. And I'm like, man, I look at my vacation time and I'm like, ah, dude, that, <laughs> that all can't happen. So like <laughs> kind of my goal this year is to just start fishing events as they pop up, see where I do good at. And then, and then kind of play from there. Hey, do I want to continue for AOI for Hobie or do I want to continue for, for KB, you know, wherever I do good and wherever it looks like it's, you know, uh, whatever event I did the best in and wherever it's looking the best, like kind of push my more of my time that way. But I mean, I think most people right now, the way they're fishing is just what's, what's nearby or like a lake that like Toledo Bend, like I went out to Toledo Bend, I like or even Kentucky Lake when when the national championship was there. Like those are just lakes you always had, you know hear about, and you, it's like, hey, there's an event there. Heck, I you know I can take a week off and go go fish. Just you know, like the first national championship, I used it as a vacation. I just I honestly didn't didn't know what I was doing, man. It was super overwhelming and i just went to go fish kentucky lake really and have a chance at winning 
you know, $50,000 or whatever it was. But, um, but yeah, I really think it's just, you know, what's depending on your goals. If you want to win AOI, that's different. You really got to kind of focus on, on one, but like, I, th- I really think most people are just fishing what's near them or, or what's close by. I mean, it's like such a hard question to answer because everyone wants different things from kayak fishing. You know, some people want it as a vacation. Some people are just recreational about it. Then some guys want to see what they can really do and chase one. So many different levels to it. You know, I mean, I think everyone's at a different level and you just have to find something you're comfortable with, you know, because for me, it's a lot about the people for me, yeah. you know, and I, I honestly, when I have a bunch of group of my friends going to a KBF event, I'm a lot more likely to go to that event. Or if it's a Hobie event, you know, even if it's far away and I wasn't planning on doing it, if I got a group of my friends going. Yeah. So everyone's just a little different. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I kind of, I kind of, I kind of agree with, I agree. Actually, I agree with both of you. Like, uh, I know for myself this year, um, I was just like, uh, when the schedules came out, I looked at what I liked. I looked at all three all three trails. I looked at uh, where they're going to be. I knew I wanted to do the Hobie on Santee, which I can't do because I didn't get in in time. Uh, <laughs> I, I knew I wanted to do Lake Murray. I really like Lake Murray. Uh, I knew I was going to do Kissimmee. Um, I mean, I'm chasing. This year, I'm chasing. I'm trying to get into the 10 uh, for uh, for next year, you know. So uh, I, I, I knew that I was going to I was going to put more effort into KBF. But now that I have a pedal kayak, I was like, I'm going to put some more effort into uh, in the Hobie as well. Oh, I forgot. We got two bona fide people. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. Oh, Lord. Hey, Russ, uh, be comfortable over there because we're coming next year, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> that bed might be spoken for next year. Yeah. And if oh, y'all, man, have if, you been to Florida? I haven't, but no? I wasn't at Gunnersville either, and I did all right. It's a cool place, man. Hopefully, we get, hopefully when you come down, we get a little warm front instead of this. Instead of, that, instead of what we just had, Russ? That was crazy. <laughs> If, yeah, if y'all have a clean chain setup, he has a that a new P127. Check out his it's YouTube awesome. channel. I saw yeah, that's all all rigged up. That, that video was tricked great. out for sure. <laughs> hey, Shane, it, was a fun, it was a fun one to do for sure. Hey cool. Shane, we we coming for you from one objective, man. We they finna trick mine out for me. We coming for your for your setup, bro. Uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's good. No, but the one thing cool about it is like at least I have the ability to remove the motor, and if a Hobie. If I want to fish a Hobie event, at least in a bona fide now, I'm able to pedal because yeah. if you guys think I'm going to come paddle against you guys in a 360, you you must have bumped your head. <laughs> <laughs> Russ, you carry both now, huh? Russ is I a do, complete, yeah. I can't, yeah. You can't I compare have the, to Russ. Uh, I have the new Wilderness Systems uh, Recon. Uh, still need to work on, on getting it set up. I just moved. I just moved not too far away i was living in nashville and just moved about 30 minutes west uh, uh adam riser actually is gonna be my, my new roommate so we've got a place uh oh, west of nashville but it's been a process for a few weeks just moving everything and doing work on the house i, I unfortunately i didn't get a get my fish finders and everything rigged out on the recon but that's uh yeah pretty much first on the priority list when i when i do get back back home is uh getting that boat all rigged out so i have something for uh fishing some of the, the deeper water and we're gonna put the, the pan optics and all that on there and um yeah oh, excited to ha- i have been using it though uh i brought it i brought it with me and uh girl on dayton had some friends down in in jupiter florida so we actually got out there for for a couple of days did a little salt water fishing and uh so i, I got to use that for a little bit and put her in my other boat and um but yeah so far i've really been liking it. it's really really stable and the pedal drive seems really solid so it's it's been pretty good boat i'm excited yeah. about uh tricking it out of here in the next couple of weeks i gotta say i saw your videos and sometimes i'm like oh man russ is out there living in a truck i feel kind of bad for him i think he's out, <laughs> he's out there showing videos he's in love He's having a great time, <laughs> and I'm, I'm I'm happy for you out there winning money with the with your girl. What? Thanks, bud. That's yeah, cool. it's been I uh, can't complain. This last last few years have been 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 really fortunate. A lot of good things to uh, to be happy about. So I'm grateful for that. That's I actually cool. I actually wanted to say congrats to you, man, on the on the sniper sniper series, right? The rod. Yeah, series. yeah, yeah. The, hey, man, I, I rod cool. Snyder's uh, sniper. Uh, just yeah, just came cool. out. It's a seven foot five, like media. It's in between like medium, medium heavy, and 
it's uh it's been great I, I finally got we had a couple prototypes before i finally got the final one uh so i just just got that and uh right before i went to florida too and uh, i've been throwing all my chatter baits on it and uh it's been it's been great it's really uh balanced hey, is the sniper, last one I had, is sniper like an old school nickname for yourself or what <laughs> to be honest it, it was called we were trying to figure out a bunch of names and at first it was uh russ's reacher which i, I realized wasn't wasn't a good idea <laughs> that's, a, that's a good good short good call on that one brother the, the, russ's the reach around is, is to yeah, cast to, maybe to cast got like over. smaller lures a long distance so anything like a like a three eight ounce lure, whether it's uh, lipless crankbait, spinner bait, uh, chatter bait. Uh, so I wanted to to make it designed just to make long casts, a lot of braid to four leaders and stuff like that. So it's like, oh, the reacher, you can reach a long way, and I didn't think that through. So, <laughs> so after being on uh, yeah, kayak bass nation there, and uh, Ryan Lambert, you know, brought that to my attention, which should thank him for that i guess and uh <laughs> yes i had a little contest on uh on kayak bass nation there to to rename the rod and uh peter yang actually Pua yang out of uh california, yeah, california. He, he came up with the name so uh so i gave him one of the, the new rods and uh yeah they're out on out available for sale and i think you'll really be happy with everybody i've been talking to has been been really liking him so far so speaking of Pua, man that that guy's so sneaky good like like he came out of nowhere last year, and then he's like, he's so good. Yeah, yeah. He's, there's yeah, a lot of sneaky guy guys here. out here. There's a lot of yeah. sneaky guys out here. Like Alex Cox, he came out yeah, fifth place national boy. championship. Yep, it's cool. Hey, he's been doing it out of a boat and everything else for a long time too, though, right? Uh, he fish. He fished college a little bit, but um, no, he he's just been a paddleboard uh, kayak guy. Cool. Yeah. So and I guess. Oh, go ahead. I just also want to say uh, big ups, congrats to Casey too, man. Uh, those are uh, the the commercial the hummingbird and old town man. That's pretty dope, bro. Both of you guys, you know, I mean, like that's what this whole uh, this conversation was about. The changes happening in the kayak world, man. And both of you guys are leading the way uh, in big changes that have been happening. That, that's huge, man. Congrats, bro. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. I was so pumped. Old town sh showed me that video and like. It, it honestly blew my mind. Like, I mean, I was there for the whole filming of it, but the way they put it together, dude, it, it just, yeah, was I was awesome. not expecting that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, like Hobie, they do a ton for their anglers. 100%. No, not doing any kind of shade there, but for, I think all of us, whenever we see a bigger company like, you know, I rod or Hummerbird, you know, whenever they're actually highlighting the anglers that are on their team, you know, because there's a lot of people on these teams, and if you go to their page, they really don't show the kayak guys, or you know, there's no kayak specific angler rods like you have now, Russ. Like that, that I, I think that means a lot to us, and we see that. Yeah, and, and we re like, man, it really feels like we're doing something, and we really appreciate that. So, yeah, con congrats to both of y'all for real. That's yeah, nice. I think it really shows. You know, not only do do all of us see that and notice it and love that, but like. You know, you got a lot of the guys in the boating world that see that and, you know, start to – and a lot of them do respect us, but there's a lot that don't. Yeah. But um, I think I think that really <laughs> helps so helps them build respect for, for us because, I mean, we're doing the same thing they're doing. They just they, – they don't see it that way, though. More but, and more are, I think, as, as the sport continues to grow, and the, I'm, I'm definitely seeing a, a change in the – the atmosphere with the bass boat world, I feel like. Oh, man. yeah. I mean, man, the, being down there at Kissimmee, you know, you got a lot of the guys practicing for the Opens down there. And, I mean, they're they're loving, you know, seeing our rigged out kayaks. And, you know, a lot of people just still don't know that, you know, that we're putting these big fish finders on there, that we got, you know, the live, we got the, um, you know, the 360s and whatnot. And they're like kind of blown away at, at what the, the fishing kayaks are nowadays. But, um, yeah, but I, yeah, I, I mean, I'll say that like that this was totally intentional, but we have Shane's the Lawrence guy, Casey, you're the Hummingbird guy, Kurt, you're the Garmin guy, and Russ, I guess you're saying you're Hummingbird too. I, so, yeah, you yeah. Sound yeah. it's crazy how far it, it really seems like this is the year where 
I mean, Casey, you've been doing it for a while, obviously, Shane, you too. But this feels like the real, like there's a real line this year where people are going live, active, panoptics. Like this is the year where it's really happening. People are really stepping up electronic games. I mean, I can't tell you how many questions I get about yeah. setting up a Garmin. I'm sure you guys are getting questions about hummingbirds. You know what I mean? And I'm not even, I'm not sponsored by Garmin. I just use them and I like them. You know what I mean? It just happens to be the one that I use. Um, and everyone I know. Th I mean, I thank you to you. I'm not, my, my new two units on now. Yeah. It's like becoming more and more normal. Well, one thing. Oh, I yeah. Them. Thanks for those tips there, Kurt. I, I set up my my Garmin, not my new Garmin. I set it up to the settings you had on your videos. So yeah, <laughs> go watch Kurt's video. That's good. One thing Thank that you. I told the the shop that I, that I kind of um, do some social media marketing for, uh, let's just say a year and a half ago was the year of like the bow mounts. And this year and next year is definitely going to be the year of double graphs and active target and hummingbird live imaging and Garmin's live scope. So um, we're, we're going to, you know, the, the mount, the mounting side of things, um, rigging side of things is definitely going to skyrocket this year for sure. No yeah, doubt. Man. Absolutely. And that just leads right into the explosion of lithium batteries. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm having to upgrade my batteries this year because I've got to put lights on and I'm putting a bigger unit on. And all of a sudden that 20 amp hour is not enough anymore. I got to get an M tech. 30 amp hour now to power everything it's doing I mean, things when, are just changing so fast because i think yeah. i think back to just like four or five years ago i was using an agm little lead acid nine amp hour battery <laughs> and that was yep. totally fine you the know NACWA, that was the Nakwa battery <laughs> yeah exactly well it wasn't a nine volt battery but i yeah. mean it, it was a 12 volt but it was a small you know it wasn't very big and it's still yeah. way too fun and now it's like it was that bass pro hours, shop special know, right <laughs> I had that, that now, you know, it's like, it's, it's just crazy how fast things are changing. I Dude, had the that fast pro shop special, man. That lead ass, <laughs> lead ass and battery. I had it. Some of the bass <laughs> boat guys, some of the bass boat guys see me on the water and they go, dude, how many batteries you got in there? I go, I got about a hundred and like 70 amp hours of lithium batteries on this thing. They're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> they just don't even know what to say. Like, and that's what, that's what you got to have to have all those double screens and yeah. active target. Shane's got stuff. batteries in every compartment. <laughs> you got one in a they're all, case and a case all lithium in a box and balance though. Yeah. That's key. Lithium and, and you got to balance Just it. The, sure. Yeah. Well, the weight uh, of it though, compared to lead acid is such I mean, yeah. a job. Oh, yeah. You can not do what you're doing without the lithium. It, your boat would sink. The technology <laughs> in sure. these lithium batteries, man, they're, they're getting more powerful and they're getting smaller and more compact and lighter. I mean, I just switched lithium battery companies, man, and uh, I thought the battery I had was small, my 100 amp battery, and the one I got now is smaller than that one. And I'm like, this is just like it's just getting crazy. Like the technology yeah. is taking over. I started with a Group 27. I I do I do construction, so I got we got semi trucks and stuff, and I grabbed a, a Group 27 semi truck battery, lead acid for my first battery on my for my motor guide <laughs> and it was oh, like uh, 75 <laughs> 80 pounds and it was only 50 amps yeah nah, speaking bro. of batteries uh paddling fin is sponsored by by you know power batteries <laughs> <laughs> sorry i like how you slid that in there yeah it's like if you're not watching i'll put up the little banner as they're talking <laughs> But uh, uh, okay, I'm sure so Casey I, pretty soon is gonna have 360 live everything, right? Uh, don't, say pretty, don't say pretty. Don't say pretty soon, bro. He's <laughs> old, uh, I, he's old I got it all. I got the 360 yeah. and the live already. And the live, you got it on there. <laughs> yeah. That's double old news, screens, bro. Double screens. Yeah, I'm doing three screens, so stand by. Are you really? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, though. 360 is my favorite. Like out of all of them, I just got the Garmin and I'm going to get a live, but that man, that 360, I do. That That's pretty awesome, too. I mean, yeah. the way I, I fish, the way I fish, that 360 is more conducive to yeah. me, but I'm, I'm also getting the live because of Casey. Okay. I got to keep up. I got to keep up with Casey, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I haven't, I don't have a lot of time with the live yet. I really, before, like, I broke it out down and practice a little bit, but um, I really want to get it dialed in and know exactly what I'm doing before I bring it out in a tournament and kind of 
play around with it during tournament time. As same thing I did with my 360. You know, I just got comfortable with it before I ever used it in a tournament. Um, but uh, but I'm really looking forward to it. But yeah, I really think as of now, I mean, that 360 is like that's where it's at for me. Like it, it's helped me catch so many fish and and really see the bottom and really be able to pinpoint target every single cast uh, that. I mean, it's just helped me so much, and I'm sure the live will too. But um, well, it's I guess it's yet to be seen, and we'll, which one I, which one I think is going to be better. And um, I'll eventually once I get used to it, I'm going to do a video like trying to explain to people what I think you should, because a lot of people have asked, should I get the 360 first or should I get the Mega Live first or which you know if I can only get one, which one should I get? And right now I don't know, but um, but but I will soon, and I'll be putting out a video kind of given and my opinions on that anyways the live stuff in certain situations is really hard to beat. you know yeah. shallow walk you know garmin calls it the perspective mode where it's shooting out like a fan man that is really hard to beat on like bedding bass fishing shallower docks i mean stuff like that where you can just walk up and you're like the third post over and it's just like, I mean, you're hitting them in the head. It's just so hard to beat that in, in yeah. certain situations. It's not, yeah. you know, it's not the end all because when I first got it, I was like using it so much. And then I realized I was like, I'm not really using it effectively. And you start realizing that I still like using side scan for scoping out big flats. Yeah. It's just, it's just interesting how things are evolving and, we're using things more specifically for certain applications or certain situations. Yeah. And once you really figure that out, it's, it's know when to use it and know when not to use it. Um, you know, so you're, you're not wasting your time just looking at it for no reason or, you know, or there's something better that you could be using during in that situation. Yeah. Uh, that's so, you know, somebody there's that's got that dialed in is really going to, is, is really going to end up doing good. Yeah, there's nothing worse than having live and finding fish that just won't eat. Because yeah, you'll just sit there and you'll see the fish, you know they're fish, and yeah. you'll just keep pitching at them, and they'll react to your your lure a little bit, but they never eat, and you'll just waste like two hours fishing on them. And yeah. They never really yeah, interesting about the, the perspective mode, too, and one thing that I use the most uh, on my active target is it's scout mode, same thing, is yeah. I go I go like – in 25 30 feet and i use it like a 360 except obviously i can't see behind me but i can fan out like you know 60 feet in front of me 60 feet to the side of me and i can hit rock piles every single time so it's like it's like a half of a 360 kind of and i use that offshore a lot instead of like forward imaging and stuff because it's i feel like the forward and the down is a little bit tougher to um kind of get used to but like scout mode out in like 25 feet especially if you're around rock piles or brush piles I hit the rock piles every single time and it's helped me catch so many fish. Cause I'm not guessing anymore. It's just like so obvious. Yeah. And it's easy to hit the rock. So. Yeah. I can't wait to get some more time uh, with the, with the live and, and kind of figure all that stuff out. I'm, I'm pretty excited for it. But watching like the bait ball, like disperse as a fish goes through it is yeah, like awesome. my favorite thing. I feel like it's, it's like you're watching, like, I don't know. It's just so cool to see it, but. You could definitely get caught up in it. Russ is like, you guys don't even, you don't even need that stuff. Yeah, and, 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 and that's, that, that's kind of, Obviously that's my, so that's my next question. Where to me. I've looked at Cody's a little bit and he's showed me, I've, man, I've just been fishing shallow. I used to use my electronics a lot when I had my bass bow. I was on par with everybody else and was on top of it. And then once I started kayak fishing, I did just, I just started fishing shallow. I think I you got a good formula, Russ. I think you're doing <laughs> all right. Working, but I, I got, I'm getting it. I'm getting it hooked up. I'm, I'm yeah. getting it done. I'm going to hook it up on the recon and uh, join you guys out, out there in that deeper water, I guess. But I mean, it, Russ is it works, like you say, it works good for bed fish. I can't, you know, it really does work good in shallow stuff. And even on flats and stuff when, you know, you could see bed fish or, or just things on, you know, different stumps or, logs underwater and just getting those accurate casts and be able to, to you know so it takes the guessing out of it so i'm i'm excited about doing that i'm a little worried like i said i'm gonna i'm gonna Wasting. end up 
you know, just casting at a bunch of fish that aren't really actively feeding and <laughs> waste my time too. So it's, better carp. It's, it's a lot of discipline. It sounds <laughs> like, but yeah, a lot of carp, right? <laughs> and 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 that that's kind of. I mean, Rush, you've won Angler of the Year last two years for KBF, right? Yep. <laughs> and then or not or the two pre Cody won it last yeah. year. One of the two years before okay. that, nineteen and twenty. And then you have Jordan Marshall and Drew Gregory who won. The last two years for Hobie, and I mean, obviously, them two are not very electronics. Jordan no. didn't run in them at all. Russ, you, you, I mean, you ran craft, but nothing, nothing live. No, I just have what a seven, a, you know, seven inch helix Gen 3. So, I mean, what is that? I mean, it definitely says that you can win without it for sure and be consistent. But if somebody is trying, is there an angler and I'm I'm sorry I'm asking this because I'm everybody's <laughs> different here. Is there an angler that people that you feel is kind of a certain kind of angler that is the best kind of angler in kayak fishing? Like if you want if you were new and you were saying, like on the bass boat side, I want to fish like you know, KVD, I want to fish fast, I want to fish crankbaits, I wanna, you know, I power fish all the time. This is how I want to fish. Is there a certain, and he's the best it's ever been, Jacob Wheeler, kind of the same thing. I'd say Drew Gregory is best at finding those sneaky backwater areas yeah. and, and you know, you. really getting getting away from from people. And uh, a lot of it's just his, just his work ethic and the time he spends researching. And, I uh, mean, he, he puts in a lot of work when it comes to all that. But I do a lot of that as well, as, as well as a number of other guys. But... I'd say I'm probably a little more versatile than than Drew as far as doing a number of different techniques. But when it comes to to doing that style of fishing, I'd say he's definitely the best there is at that. Yeah, for sure. I, I'd say Christine Fisher is the best ninja there is on a kayak. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've seen any of her videos, but you got I'm some pretty, some good balance, huh? I know. I'm pretty sure. Thing so quick. I'm pretty sure she can stand on the rudder and catch a fish, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the way she launches her boat and then walks up on the front, bruh, I'd be in the water so quick. Dude, every time I watch her set the hook, I'm like, if I set the hook like that, I'd be in the water every time. Yeah. Every time. So there, there's really no like kind of angler right now who's kind of setting themselves. Like if you were diagramming a certain kind of angler that they're the most successful right now. Uh, I mean, I, I'd probably have to say it's probably Russ, man. I mean, I mean, uh, let's I'd say talk Guillermo about right now. He's well, right on, now, he's uh, right now, Guillermo is on a tear. Yeah, <laughs> he is. But I mean, Guillermo's he's not a big electron. I mean, he's on the Diablo. He's got a little uh, trolling motor, but he's not like a big electronics guy, right? I, I have a Diablo and I haven't won a damn thing on it, so I'm. I, I want to get some money back. I got one sitting. He right won this last there. one. He borrowed a, a Hobie Lynx. He yeah. showed up to this tournament. He didn't even know he was going to fish the tournament. He uh, he decides last minute, like Thursday night. He's like, oh, I think I'm going to fly in. So he, I think he flies in on fr Friday, the day before the tournament. Borrowed. Uh, he's staying at the, the Dakota Lithium House with with a bunch of us and. Uh, borrowed Christine had an extra Hobie Lynx laying around, which is looks like a stand up paddle board with a Hobie yeah. drive. Mm -hmm. And uh, borrowed a bunch of rods, borrowed some say, you know, a handful of lures from all of us, and one out there and won the damn thing. Yeah, yeah, I was mad, bro. I was mad. I thought I had him. I was mad. That's like you flipping last year and winning at Kissimmee. That was that was wild, yeah. I got I just got that uh, little reminder on my my Facebook there from my stories from a year ago. I watched that again, and had a good laugh, and sometimes. Hey, Russ, yeah. Cody Cody Henley's turning some heads for sure, huh? He is, man. He's a good guy too. Just been getting yeah. to know him uh, up here. I've been, I say I'm at the ten. He's he's up here. He's actually my uh, yeah my neighbor here next door. He's got the room next door. We've been chatting, getting to know each other. But he's a hell of a guy and a hell of a good fisherman. And seems like he, he's got him figured out better than everybody right now. I, I'm betting on him to win this thing tomorrow. I think we'll he's see leading. I he's on my can't fantasy say, team. Uh, I think he's leading. I, <laughs> he uh, I don't know if you want to mention it, Russ, but did you uh <laughs> did you did you fish uh, the other Marion today? No, I fished there yesterday, um, 
and only caught one fish. They opened that lake up to everybody. I don't think anybody fished it, to be honest. But okay. from what I heard, I think there's maybe eight guys or so that went down there. And it sounds like, I mean, sometimes people exaggerate. I don't know. But from what it sounds like, three guys lost one over 10 pounds. Brandon Bissell said he hooked one on a Senko that he swears was like over 12. Like by far the biggest fish of his life. Had it on for like two, three minutes. Came off. Uh, Scotch had one on a Senko. Matt Scotch had one on a Senko that just he couldn't loosen his drag and tie. It ran out to deep water and just snapped him off on 17 pound. Uh, Josh Stewart, who that guy has caught a lot of 9, 10 pounders here lately. <laughs> He said he never saw one, but he swears it was over 10, too. So, um, Sounds like they're biting a Cinco down there. A <laughs> little bit. Sound uh, like it? <laughs> what else is new? It's tempting. What today we got to fish it. We had one day, you know, they opened it up just for the 10, which was today and, and tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday. But they opened it up for us on Monday to go out there and practice. Uh, but Monday was still just, you know, probably the worst day to fish. The second day after that cold day front, day still front. super cold yeah. in the morning. Not a breath of wind, not a cloud in the sky. So uh, I don't know. I feel like if we, we, you know, our practice day was, you know, had a little bit better weather, you know, that you can really catch them pretty good there. I'm, I'm guessing a couple of these, a couple of the guys, I think Matt Scotch is going there tomorrow. He only got four fish today. So. He's going to run out there tomorrow, and I was talking to Mike Elsie. Who he's, he had a good day today, and uh, he's worried that his fish are drying up too, so he's uh, contemplating yeah. making the run out to the new Marion as well. Hey, hey, do me a favor, Russ. Tell Mike, yes, they're drying up because we fished very close to each other. Um, <laughs> t tell him they're drying up. He needs to leave that spot, bro, for real. I, I'll tell him. I'll tell, I mean, it's a gamble. He, he had a good day today. I mean, the thing is, is tomorrow the weather – it, it, the weather's, like I said, the weather's been brutal. Every morning's been close to like 30 degrees. I think one day it was like high 20s, 27, I think. Uh, but <clears> tonight <throat> it, it's only dropping down to 54 degrees for the first time. That'll be the first time in probably four days where, where you know, it didn't drop into the 20s or 30s. So what was the water they, they could start pushing back up tomorrow i'm guessing yeah. i'm guessing the bite's gonna be a little better tomorrow there's gonna be some good ones caught wait the weather the weather drops to the I'm take them all. Yeah, it's been Florida. every morning it's been in the 20s or 30s for the last i've night. never seen that before in my whole life i don't know four days yeah they was like record breaking low <laughs> that's the cali guy said? right there yeah, that's, right? that's the cali guy no he's, he's talking because he's in cali <laughs> don't get that cold oh, yeah. <laughs> It gets cold out there in California. That's where I'm from. It gets cold out there. Clear lake will drop in the 20s. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, Trent, we're kind of wrapping this up now. And, you know, we have talked some kind of technique because we have so, some of the best anglers in the country. Give everybody what your most, if you don't mind, your most successful bait in 2021. Shane, we'll start with you. Ooh. Or anybody who wants to go first. Yeah, I'll start. Okay, I'll start. Uh, for me, um, it's gonna be the Nico rig. Uh, I throw the Nico rig all over the all over the place, even in Texas. Uh, when I went to Gunnersville and same, you know, and just up and down California, the Nico rig for me has just been lights out. Um, whether it's a, a seven inch Robo worm or a six inch Cinco, five inch Cinco. Um, I don't know what it is about the Nico weight or the Nico rig for me, but I just have a ton of confidence in it, especially when it comes to, like I talked about earlier, getting offshore and, uh, throwing that in like 20, 25 feet on rocks or brush, uh, something about it. I just, I just have a lot of confidence in, uh, when Russ came out and taught us all a valuable lesson at Clear Lake, um, a couple of years ago at the Bass champion at the Bass uh, tournament, uh, I was out in 20 feet at Clear Lake with six pound test on a Nico Nico rig. I and watched just, that uh, video. Yeah, it was. It was so I, I throw it on six pound test too, and six uh, pound, I get bit and I hold on. Seagar Tatsu has never failed me, but yeah, the Nico rig for me is definitely my uh, my number one confidence bait for sure. Casey, shake your head. <laughs> so surprisingly not, not like what it, it seems like the last couple of years you kind of i know every right? time i talk to uh, these guys it's always shaky head. i don't believe it, it. Was, i don't believe it I don't it was the it. second most successful bait for me last year i do believe he's holding out Hold uh the, the jackhammer man actually 
I think like the last three events of the year, pretty much. Like I caught not all, but pretty much all of my fish on on a jackhammer. Um, it felt really good. Like I mean, I, I've you know I've done good with a jackhammer before, but like not where I've just had it in my hand for three tournaments in a row and caught fish constantly on it. Like it, I tell you, when you do that, it really really boosts your confidence in a bait and really makes you feel like you know what you're doing with it now and you know know where to throw it and and what like how to retrieve it properly. Rob, how about you, man? The jig master. It's gonna be a shaky head for me, bro. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. No, I'm lying. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm joking, bro. Uh, no, I mean you already know what I'm gonna say, man. It's a jig, bro. Uh, it, for me, it's it's uh, the most versatile bait in my tackle box. I mean, I, I can power fish it, I can finesse fish it, uh, I can do stuff in between with it. Uh, what jig? Like an Arky? Uh, Arky head is probably my favorite style jig. Sure. Um, but I mean, there's a there's a jig for there's a different jig yeah. for every. Well, yeah, uh, you, you were saying jig, you know, like specifically which jig, man? Um, swim jig, football, casting, finesse. Uh, I probably throw the swim jig less than anything else. Um, I don't really throw a lot of finesse jigs, uh, so I'd probably have to say Arky head and football head. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, even though I say I don't, I throw swim jig less than all of them, but I literally caught every fish. Uh, in the Kissimmee on a swim jig, literally every fish on a swim jig, including, so the, inclu- including my two footer that I lost that would have helped that would have helped me oh. beat Guillermo. <laughs> I don't even want to go there, but you know, yeah, man, jig, bro, jig for 2021, uh, and I guess now starting 2022, jig so far. Kurt, is it a three and a half inch <laughs> swim bait on a? Picasso tungsten ball head. I don't even need to say it. You're right. That's exactly <laughs> what it was for me in 2021. I mean, that exact setup. I, it seemed like every lake I went through, I would throw that and I would catch quality fish. Did y'all rehearse this? I may or may not be a creeper on his YouTube channel. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, what size I, line? I, I have what made a couple line? videos about it. Yeah. What size line? Yeah, I'm curious about your line and your rod setup, if you don't mind talking about it. Oh, no, not at all, man. It's a, so I like a medium light, fast action rod, uh, seven foot, six, ten, right around that uh, range. Um, 20 pound eight strand for the braid, and then I put a leader on it. Usually a 17 pound leader, but depending on some of the water quality, I might get down to like a 12 pound mm-hmm. leader on it. That's pretty beefy I, leader. I, you I, said. I, so, I, so, you, so you're throwing it in, <laughs> you're throwing it in cover then. Uh, yeah, so, sometimes. Yeah. sometimes. Okay, go back and watch the watch uh, bar video whenever it was him. Whenever he was talking about it, he throws it. I mean, I've had you on the show a bunch, too. And I try yeah. to listen to everybody. Like, you really throw it in cover. And we also had just a finesse swim baits show with you and Catherine. And after that, she was talking about the Okashira. I caught a 10-pounder on 8-pound line on an Okashira and a KFL event. Yeah, so okay, that, I feel that, like... I feel like I, just I, made I, I really up. listened to that to that uh that episode. Yeah. That we had. It, it, it's a man. It, it's a, when you're sure. trying to match a certain size bay, it's hard to beat that setup. Yep. Now That's you right. got to tell me what an Okashira is. I don't even know what that is, bro. Just mega a little bass. mega bass. It's it, it's wow. just a. I mean, same as it's just a little jig head, but it's got a little propeller on it. I don't know. I can't, know. Does I can't, it, a, I can't afford <laughs> mega bass, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Boy, we were man. just fishing those. A buddy of mine was just fishing those today, those open share heads. Yeah. They're, they're good. I, I use, I mean, that's what I caught my biggest fish on this year. I used the three and a half inch that I'm sponsored by Exxon. The spark shads are great, but they tear up so doggone fast. You burn like one fish and they're done. That I, I still love the open share head, but I used the, the three and a half inch Exxon on there. And that that's worked for me. Russ, how about you, man? Uh, 2021, I have to say the buzz bait. Usually I always say swim jig. I've done really well. Swim jig is probably one of my, my best confidence baits. And I've caught a number of fish 2021 on the swim jig as well. But uh, I'd say overall, it's, 
Buzz Bay, a three eighths ounce, black, a little bit of red, uh, gold blade. Uh, it's, what, it's one of my what, favorites. Do you make uh, your own? I do. Yeah. yeah, I get the components from uh, Cast Industries. Uh, so I get all my jig head, spinner bait bodies, buzz bait bodies, and uh, then you get the components from either like Jan's Net Craft or Barlow's or um, I don't know, just a few other ones too. But yeah, that's uh, yeah, I'm a big believer in just making my own lures. I feel like just being able to design them and, and tweak them like that, you really get to learn about you know just understand why they work instead of just you know buying something out of a package and throwing it on. And, making it yourself and just get a good understanding of what about your trailer i don't put you know i don't put a try there was times where i just get the three eights with the gold blade and i put like a horny toad on it um but she i just i usually do it without a trailer it works just fine skirt? i make a really bulky skirt i really i put oh, a lot yeah. more material on my buzz bait skirt than i would on a jig spinner bait or or any other lure i, I put, put about 50 to 55 strands uh, on a three eighths ounce buzz bait, and uh, I use an extra thick, really, really heavy wire, like the beefiest wire that I can too. So, I didn't know you were a jig. I didn't know you were a swim jig guy, dude. I didn't know that. Oh yeah, that's probably my go-to. If I had hey. one lure to throw, yeah. in, that's what it would I, be. My my, your, my favorite. Let me get your bait. number, girl. Swim <laughs> jig. <laughs> let me get your number, girl. Let's talk. <laughs> That's my that's my two favorite bases too. Yeah. 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 Mm. All right, guys, it's been an hour. We appreciate it. Uh, thank you for being on show, Russ. Man, good luck. Sack him up, dude. Go I hope so. I only got luck, four Russ. fish today, man. I got to get a big limit tomorrow. I had a twenty and a twenty-one. Lost two that were just the same size too, and it was one short of my limit. So a little yeah. bummed about it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go whack them tomorrow and catch that's me right. a big limit and see. Hopefully, I can jump a few spots. And, Tell your luck, man. Girl. Call luck. your girl. Tell her you love her and, and say love something. Her. <laughs> yeah, give, her some, give her some phone kisses and go out there and She's wear them. She's been really supportive. Man. She's been awesome. So. Cool. Well, thank you guys and uh, everybody. Thank you for watching. As always, wear your PFDs and we'll uh, we'll see you again next week. Thanks. All right. Thanks for having us on. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, Take care, Appreciate it. See you see guys. It. Thanks for tuning in to another killer episode on Paddle in Finn. Don't forget to go check out our website at Paddle, the letter N, and Finn.com. Don't forget to check out the YouTube channel at Paddle and Finn. If you got a question, comment, want to hear from a future guest on a future episode, feel free to email us at Paddle, the letter N, and Finn at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Paddle and Finn on Facebook and Instagram. Shout out to our show supporters, Angler, the Angler button and app just makes for a better time on the water and creates a virtual logbook for every fishing outing out on the water. Shout out to Rocktown Adventures, located in Northern Illinois, for all your kayaking, camping, and hiking needs. Shout out to Jigmasters Jigs. When in doubt, get the jig out. Go to jigmasters.com.